Welcome to Getting Started with Python for Complete Noobs with me, Tokyo EdTech. This video came about by a viewer question I got about an hour and a half ago, actually. And this person said, does this work with Python 3.102? Uh, if yes, which should I use, Python 3.10 or idle Python 3.10? I don't know which is which. Sorry, I'm new. And so I just want to say thanks to uh, Roblox Gamer, I guess is the name. Just, you know, it takes a lot of courage to ask a question like that on the internet because people on the internet can be really, really rude. And I think about this question, it's a really good one because getting started is really challenging when you're first learning to code. Um, now, when I learned to code many, 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 many years ago, it wasn't that hard to get set up because it was automatically in coding mode. Um, so, my, one of my first computers was a Commodore 64, and when you turn on the computer, it looked a lot like this. You basically are in a programming environment. Now, you could load things on, from the disk at this point, but the computer didn't do anything unless you had it on disk or you programmed it yourself. So you could do a little bit of basic, um, so something like this is stuff we used to do when we were kids. <laughs> Print, let's say, Tokyo EdTech rules, and... Then I could go to 20, uh, go to 10, enter, and then I can run my program. You notice I'm already coding. I don't really have a choice. I got to do coding or it doesn't do anything. If I hit enter, and then just prints over Tokyo EdTech rules over and over and over again. So this is pretty cool. So if you ever have a desire to check out really old school coding, check out virtualconsoles.com. I just Googled and there it was. So what I want to look at today is the following coding concepts. Uh, what is Python? What does, what does it mean when I say I'm using Python? Uh, what is IDLE? This person asked about IDLE, and IDLE, actually, I just Googled it, stands for Integrated Development and Learning Environment. I did not know that. Uh, where can I get these two things? And do I have to use IDLE? And so we'll talk about different code editor options. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to take us back to the main screen. And the first question is, what is Python? And Python is a programming language. That's it. Uh, it's a language that, that is very popular these days. It's used in uh, education. I use it to teach my students. Uh, it's used in AI extensively. It's used in a lot of different areas. It has, it's really powerful and has a relatively simple syntax compared to other things like Java. So if you're new to programming, you first need to download and install Python. Now chances are your computer may already have it. For example, I know Mac comes with it. Uh, I use Linux, so what you're seeing here is Linux, and Linux comes with Python installed. I don't know about Windows. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But long story short, you gotta go to python.org and go to Downloads and choose your platform. So if you're a Windows user, you would click on Windows, and you'll see latest Python release 3.10.2. That's the time I'm recording this video in early 2022. So you would just go ahead and download it. And I guess download it. Actually, nope, that's not it. Sorry. It works a little differently on, um, on Linux. So you'll see here, oh, interesting. So stable release is 3.9.10. Wow, there's a lot of different options here. Chances are what you want is the Windows installer probably 64-bit. That is my guess. I'm pretty sure that's what everybody is going to want to use. Um, if you're on Mac, again, I teach at a school, we use Mac. You go to the Mac page, and then you'll see, again, uh, 3.10.2, and Mac OS 64-bit universal to installer. Again, this will change as they release updates for Python. So you need to download it and install it, however that works on your particular system. Um, Linux, you usually just do it from the command line. Uh, probably if you're a Linux user, this might not be, you, know, you probably already know most of this stuff. So you've downloaded it, you've run it, you've run the installer, you've installed it, and probably what pops up is this. At least for my students, when they install Python, they end up getting the idle shell. This is the, what, what did they call it? Let's go back to that, because I just learned it myself. Integrated Development and Learning Environment. Okay, so this gives you, it says idle shell 3.8. So in my case, I'm running Python 3.8. Um, especially new people tend to get really, you know, crazy about the, the version numbers. Am I using the right version? Uh, basically, 
any 3.0 version is probably going to be fine for a new person. Um, even a, a 2.7 version, for if you're new, it's not going to make that big a difference to you. So don't, don't stress about that. So what you see here is Python, sort of. Um, but it's the interactive shell. So if I go ahead and type something like print, you know, hello world, and I hit enter, it runs it, it runs it right there. So I'm actually running it, and like as I click enter, it is actually running. So if I want to do something like a loop for i in range, you know, let's say five, and then print hello, print hello, then hit enter, and enter, you can see where it just, as soon as I hit enter, it's executing the code. Okay, so as a beginner, this is this is well, yeah, as you're not a beginner, this is not what you want to do most times. You know, this is good for just like testing out certain features and trying things as you go. So, for example, I can go import turtle, uh, turtle, and win equals. I think I'm just doing this from memory. Turtle dot uh, was it screen? I think enter, and then what you can't see on my second screen here is a little. Python turtle graphics window. And then what I could do is I could make a little turtle bob equals turtle. Yeah, if you don't know what any of this is, don't worry. This is just an example. And then you can see there's my little bob character. I can say bob.shape. So what's cool about this is as I'm entering in and text and I'm hitting enter, it's actually showing me what I've done. So let's make bob into a turtle. Let's see, he's a little turtle. And then we can say bob.color. There's a lot of things we can do with the turtle module. I tend to like green, and you can see as you're typing, you get the results instantly. So if I say bob.fd, I'm gonna go ahead and make a, make a mistake. I'm gonna say bob.gd, 100, and you can see you get a little, little error. It tells you turtle object has no attribute gd. What I meant was bob.fd, 100, and you see bob moved forward 100 pixels. But this is not a turtle tutorial. So let me go ahead and close that. This is a Python turtle uh, tutorial and a little bit about idle just enough to get you started so that you can start following other tutorials so let me go back to concepts here so Python it is a programming language um, chances are you need to install at least the latest version so you can go to python.org install it should be pretty straightforward um, idle is the integrated development and learning environment that comes with Python at least it usually does. Uh, on my Linux machine, I had to install it separately, but I know it comes with the uh, Mac version because my students install it and it always pops right up. So Idle lets you code kind of directly like this, but we can also go, oops, let me go back to the main screen, sorry about that. But we can also go to File, make a new file. And now this is where we can actually start writing a program. So my first program, and oops, by at Tokyo EdTech. And so traditional, uh, you know, programmer, first program is hello world, exclamation point. So if I save this, so first I need to save it. And again, this is, I'm on Linux, so this might look a little bit, you know, unusual to you. So I'm going to save this. You can see I was already practicing earlier. <laughs> I'm just going to say my first program, uh, program two, dot. The important thing is to save it as dot py. So you can see here py, py, I'm not sure what pyw is, but py. So hit save. And you'll see here it says run, or you can use the F5 key. I'm just going to hit run module. And you can see over here now, it popped up hello world. So it says restart home desktop workshop blah 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 my first program and it ran over here and again if i make a mistake uh blah, and i forgot to close that i forgot the uh, parenthesis for example Oops. save it i'm gonna run it i get an error expected unexpected eof while parsing and that is something you can learn about in a different video um, so you can see it's just like a very lightweight fast coding environment that you that comes with Python usually and gets you started. So up to this point, if you know, if you've never done this before, you don't know what you're doing, this is where you can start. Okay. Um, you know, if you're gonna start watching a tutorial like one that I've done or one that somebody else has done, 
getting to this point where you can create a program, you can print something on the screen, this tells you that you've set up Python correctly. This tells you that you are ready to, you know, basically start coding and learning to code. Um, I have a ton of like, you know, beginner tutorials on my channel. You can check those out. Um, so going back to coding concepts. So what is Python? What is idle? Where can I get them? Python.org. We got that down, down already. Um, question I get sometimes is, do I have to use idle? And the answer is no, you don't. Um, you can use other, there are many, 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 many other options. Um, I put a couple up here. There's, oops, sorry, let me switch to the main screen. So there is something called Thani, and this is a, an IDE, Integrated Development Environment for Beginners. You might find this to be easier to use. And you can see there are Windows, Mac, and Linux versions, apparently. Um, yeah. There's Visual Studio Code, which is a great program, but it's, I find this one a little bit complicated, I think, especially for beginners. I did a video about why I use the one that I use, and uh, you'll see that in a second. Um, but uh, this is a great choice as well. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it just can be a little bit complicated to get set up with this one, because it's, it's you know, kind of halfway between like a beginner thing and a, and a professional thing. And the one that I use is called Genie. Um, so Genie is kind of a lightweight program. It does all kinds of different languages. Um, you see it has 50 different programming languages it has support for. I find this a really good uh, beginner, good for beginners and good for some of the more advanced stuff you might want to do. Um, so Genie looks something like this. That's Java. Um, so let me go ahead and open up my program I just did. And that was on my desktop. And so my first program too. Let's click open. And what's nice about this is there are different, uh, where's it at? Tools, uh, document, change color scheme. You can, there are different color schemes. There's like the default, which is kind of like what we saw before. Also, I'm going to make sure what that is. Um, you can download other uh, different, you know, themes, which I, I, I prefer a darker theme. And you know, my students play around with that quite a lot as well. So um, this one, you have a compile button here. You have the run button here. If you click run, in my case, it appears here. Sometimes it pops up in a separate window. Um, but this is the one that I like to use. And there's also the sidebar. Um, so like when you start doing stuff like, uh, you know, name equals Bob. Um, so you'll see variables will pop up here. How kind of helps you keep track of your code? So def uh, go home, oops, go home, and you see where functions pop up and variables. Again, if you don't know what that stuff is, that's okay. Um, but it, I think I find this program to be really fast uh, and really effective. But again, if you're just getting started out, there's nothing wrong with using idle until you get used to some of the, the concepts, and then you start finding it's a little bit. Yeah, it's, you're just not being able to do what you want to do with that. So anyway, that's about it. Um, basically, if you're just getting started, just to kind of recap, you want to go to python.org, go to downloads, um, choose your operating system, download and install Python. Then basically idle should be included. You, as I showed you earlier, you can just kind of get started, make your first program, follow tutorial. I've got a ton of them. Uh, there's lots of great YouTubers. I got a lot of great tutorials. And you know what? Just have fun with it. Coding is supposed to be fun. Uh, it's supposed to be exciting. It can be frustrating if you're just getting started, but you know, you just got to power through it and get to all the cool stuff. Okay. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Uh, thanks again to Roblox Gamer uh, for your question. Hope this video helps you out. I made it just for you. Take care. Keep on coding.